everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Retro Wrestling Review. I'm your host, Gene Jackson, and we're on a roll because once again, I am joined by my co-hosts, none other than Josh Briley and Richard Mulliken of P3 Radio. Guys, welcome back Ooh. once again. Hey, it's good to be back. We, yeah, uh, man. It's nice here. The weather's nice. Uh, the shows are uh, fun. So we're, uh, no, we're, we're looking forward to being a part of this show again, man. Great show coming up today. Oh, man, we're going to have a lot of fun today, guys. I, I'm really psyched about this one. So uh, rather than uh, rather than rambling on too much at the beginning, we're just going to get right into this. Corey Macklin lets us know right out of the gate that we have a new Southern Heavyweight Champion in there, Jeff Jarrett. And he's here today. PG-13 are going to be in action once again today. And we'll see Doug Gilbert taking on Dirty Dutch Mantel right here on the show. So that's a match I'm looking forward to. Plus well, a couple of fun surprises along the way. So you know how we get it going here on USWA Championship Wrestling. We say that, and then we go immediately to a commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> and so when we come back from that first break, we're going to take a look at Jeff Jarrett winning that Southern Heavyweight title last Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. So let's take a look at that right now. Speed, though, back behind as Christopher whoops him in hard. Send Jeff down. Covers Jeff. I don't know that I've ever heard Corey Macklin more excited about something than when Jeff, yeah, he got him. <laughs> it's like Joey Styles all of a sudden. what do you guys think of that? Dude, supreme fucking action, man. Like it was just, oh my God. Like the, it, at the end, like just to add the little cherry on top and just for the chaos of the situation, when Frank Morrell's making that slow ass count, Burt Prentice has a leg and he starts pulling on the ass of Frank's pants and just trying to stop the count. And it's still not working. One, two, three, new Southern heavyweight champion, man. I, I just, I love it. I like the fact that they didn't have uh Jeff move. Like, you know, we've all seen that thing where the manager's holding the guy and, if the last Dude, second, the, I would have bet everything yeah. I own that, that Jeff was fixing to move and he was going to clock Burt Prentice. Yeah. And then Jeff like hulked up, blocked a pile driver and gave him one of his own beautiful pile driver, man. Here's a question. Yes. Though. If the kiss from Jeff Jarrett with that drop kick, that just little kiss that he gave him knocked Frank rail down that long. Why did the boot in the back? from brian not do anything to him <laughs> that's a fair question but i did love that that he turns it around he's like trying to get him to get up and then when he sees that jeff's getting up he immediately just boots him right to the back, <laughs> puts him back down. that was great <laughs> but if if it had been if the referee had been kevin christian i don't know that we'd have had a new champion because burt prentice would have snatched him out of that ring with one <laughs> hand but because it was frank morrell using both hands burt could not budge him to get him it was pull like him just, out when he was making that three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> uh yes but that was uh i like that finish i like the the whole scenario and I, like i say i love Corey's enthusiasm when the title changed he's like hey god <laughs> so uh and so in this episode i'm gonna point it out now it's almost like somebody has heard our last few episodes and has somehow gone back in time 30 some odd years and altered history because there's things that happen here that's almost like they've heard our gripes and they're and they're tweaking some things or they've heard uh some of the positives because our very first match today is a rematch of what Josh said was his favorite part of the show recently. We're going to see another match between Jeff Jarrett and Reggie B. Fine. Now, it's going to be a non-title match, but once again, it's a fun match, and I felt bad because that was Josh's favorite match on that show, and like an a-hole, I didn't even put a clip of it. So this time, I do have a couple of highlights from the match. Jeff Jarrett taking on Reggie B. Fine. Fine backs him up against the ropes, whips Jeff in. Good shoulder from Jeff Jarrett. Oh, oh here he goes again. Has Reggie B. Fine ever been in a wrestling match? He didn't claim he had his hair pulled. Boy, you talk about miracles. <laughs> That's a miracle. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett pulled Reggie B. Fine there, yeah. This is the hole on Jarrett, and Jeff goes back around him again behind him. Reggie B. Fine backs him up and whips him in. Shoulder from Jarrett and sends him down. Oh. Oh, how's it looking, Reggie B. Fine? He said he pulled his tights there that time. Well, Reggie B.'s credibility has suffered. I mean, when a man with no hair comes out and immediately claims his opponent pulled his hair, your credibility just kind of, you know, oh, yeah. it goes it. down to about <laughs> zero. And he got a good-looking win here. What's Reggie B.? Oh, boy. Missed him that time after whooping Fine into the turnbuckles. And, Reggie Fine goes after Jeff Jarrett now. Whoops Jeff Hardy to the turnbuckles. Gonna stretch around and uh, grabs a hold of Jeff and whoops him into the other side. Goes in and catches a boot from Jeff Jarrett. Fine turns around. Jeff's on the top rope. Fine press on him. He got him. One, two, three. The USWA Southern Heavyweight Champion Jeff Jarrett gets the win. So some fun antics there from Reggie B. He's always getting that hair pulled. It's a shame. And the tights somehow on a shoulder tights. block. <laughs> that's that's what makes it so fun is he gets his hair pulled. He doesn't have any hair. And then he claims he got his tights pulled on a shoulder tackle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how that would work, Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but kind of like y'all pointed out last time, uh, I find it amusing. Uh how entertained the announcers are by it. like Dave and Corey both seem genuinely amused with, with Reggie in these matches. Uh, and so we, uh, we see once again, I think perhaps Reggie's like, man, I can't take that goofy ass DDT. You do just give me a cross body. Cause that's two matches in a row where Jeff has finished him off with the cross body and not his infamous leaping DDT that, that Richard's such a fan of terrible. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. So, you know, we see the title win. We see a non-title win over Reggie B. And then we inexplicably cut to a video. Now, Richard was telling me before we went on the air that the video, the version of this show, show that he watched didn't have the sound for this video. They cut the music. But the one that me and Josh saw that I put on the YouTube channel, it actually has the music. And I thought, um, you know, just... A little bit of insight here when that when you upload these videos to youtube um sometimes immediately sometimes a few days later you'll get you know an email saying hey there's copyrighted material in here and it'll be music uh if you if there's any wwf clips in there i'll usually pick those out that's why a lot of times like probably last week you guys might remember um it said uh all right, let's take a look at this giant Gonzalez video. And then immediately it cuts right to Dave and them. Talking, All right, well, there you saw the giant Gonzalez. That's because I had to cut out the entire video. Or it was going to be a copyright claim against us. Uh, but it'll give you the option uh, when it finds copyrighted music, you got a few options. Uh, you can just leave it and uh, your, your video won't be seen in certain areas. Like the WWF clips usually 
it'll show it everywhere, but like Russia, Indian, the Bhutan, whatever the hell that is. There's like nine regions that your video won't show in. And it's nine regions that I assume that nobody watches the USWA podcast. So sometimes I let it go. Uh, but then other times it gives you no option like it did on the Giant Gonzalez video. Uh, but anyway, for songs, it'll give you the option of either just muting it all together so there's no sound, which I'm guessing that's what the person who uploaded the one Richard saw. That's what they did. And it also is a matter of what, how long ago they uploaded it because this didn't used to be an option. Then you got the option of uh, replacing it with generic non-copyrighted music. That's the option I usually pick at random. So if you're ever watching these USWA shows and you're like, what? That song doesn't match up with what's happening at all. That's just because I randomly clicked on some dumb song that doesn't match up. But this is the song. When you listen to this, folks, when you watch and listen to this video, just realize that this is the song that Jerry Jarrett intended for it to have or whomever edited this video together. Now, if you're just listening to this, I say this usually once every week, but I really mean this, and I think Josh and Richard will back me up. <laughs> if there's ever a reason to go to YouTube and watch the video cast of this particular episode, <laughs> this video alone is it because it's the, this it's so odd. Um, so let's let's check out the video. I can't wait to hear these guys <laughs> feedback on this video. And I can't wait for you guys to hear the odd choice of music. Because keep in mind, this is Jeff Jarrett. This isn't the all-American Lex Luger. This isn't Sergeant Slaughter. This is just good old Jeff Jarrett. So let's check. Ah, well, we have technical. two takes and they couldn't get the kid making the shot <laughs> <laughs> so my favorite part of that is when, he, when they they cut to the basketball court i'm like jeff jarrett's recreating the two cold scorpio wcw music video right now yeah. like these kids are gonna be like oh we gotta walk to school and he's gonna be like ha, 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 we're gonna fargo strut the school kids <laughs> but we didn't get that unfortunately we want to go to the game room the oh, two uh, things that stood out the most though about that was when he does the like, so all right, so let's just be honest. Jeff took a, a vacation, and he brought back all the clips from his vacation, and they were like, we should put that to Ray Charles's America the Beautiful, and 
throw in one wrestling clip, you know? Yeah. And they, the one wrestling clip they throw in, he drops a fist on the guy. It looks like the guy has a seizure. And then we're treated to a very close and personal view of the guy's tank and ball region. <laughs> it's like, I've never guy. seen a jobber struggle so hard to kick out of what was clearly the finish because that guy was kicking with everything he had. <laughs> <laughs> and it was not making the part you just mentioned any better. That was making it much worse. He's like he's a shaver. Oh, I definitely. Like, <laughs> what was the space shuttle? That's the most. That to me is the most bizarre aspect. Like, what does Jeff Jarrett and a space shuttle taking all well, have to do? With my thing people? is, you you keep having the American flag in the background, <laughs> and I said to Richard, it was like he's going off to war. This is a send off. We just do a tribute video to him and uh, when he gets back. But like, this is March. This is not near like Memorial Day or Fourth of July or anything like that. But I guess, you know, <laughs> was it we need a patriot, was man. It, was it just me or did they put the same clip of him petting his dog awkwardly in there? Like it like it was the same clip. <laughs> yeah, twice. Like uh you couldn't pet you couldn't do something different with the dog, maybe throw the stick. <laughs> oh, All you could do is walk right up and put it in his mouth and he pet him. <laughs> he's a blind <laughs> dog. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, with all the American flag stuff in my head, the first time I watched this is like, we're going to come back and Tojo Yamamoto is going to attack him with a kendo stick and introduce right. the latest, you know, Japanese guy who's on tour from Japan over here. Or, you know, God forbid, in 1993, we're going to have a Russian show up and attack or something <laughs> like, no, nah, that's 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 not what's about to happen at all. Like what's about to happen has nothing to do with this video but of course you know what's about to happen it's time to take another break so we go to commercial break and when we come back from the commercial break we come back to more jeff jarrett like this is my biggest complaint about uswa since we've been watching it is their ability to space things out like all right we got a 90 minute show can you not break these segments up where we're not watching the same guy in like three to four segments yeah. back to back? I mean, we, you know, we saw that one show two or three weeks ago. It was like Brian Christopher for like 40 minutes of the show. He was in every segment. And I like me some Brian Christopher. I like me some Jeff Jarrett. But holy, like, do we need it back to back to back to back again? Um, I mean, what, am I just being a jerk? Am I being too, you know, critical? Or what do you guys think about that? Well, I think some weeks they just probably had five people show up for the show. Like honestly, I think I mean I get that, but when you yeah. when you when you finish watching the show, you realize oh, yeah. there's other segments and there's other guys. Now maybe they hadn't gotten there yet. I mean <laughs> surely Jamie Dundee wasn't late, but you know, um I feel I you, Gene. Like if you're gonna have a guy on three times, maybe do it beginning, middle, end, not necessarily yeah. first three segments, and then he's he never yeah. there again, you know. Like, yeah, yeah they, they could be spaced out and placed a little differently for sure to not ruin the taste. Well, it was like the Bruise Brothers last week were in like almost every segment. Like they just kept coming back. And and that was the biggest thing I hated as a kid. It was like you didn't have any variety. It'd be like every time if you saw somebody, you were going to see that person. It wasn't like a one and done unless it was like TD Steel or something. <laughs> and there was always a shot. TD might come back and do another match, you know? Yeah. It's a wrestling. But I mean, in their defense, perhaps Jeff, well, he was going to have to immediately leave the studio to go pet his dog. And, <laughs> you know, him and they had to fly a rocket ship to Mars you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> to go help children play basketball on Mars. I don't know, but. <laughs> Uh, obviously the program's not working did you see the shitty shot on that kid <laughs> <laughs> yeah they need somebody besides jeff i guess to teach him basketball i don't know like, <laughs> George still on that instead of, of, of yeah. having three matches a show but the kid was uh, probably really good at basketball before jeff started working <laughs> <laughs> i just did what you said sir <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but that's the, that's the most random. I don't. If they come up with a video more random than that, I can't wait to see it because. <laughs> but those slow motion turns, and the funny thing is, is like usually with those old fabulous ones videos and stuff, they'd have this huge smile. But Jeff looks so awkward, like he's like, "Should I be smiling? Am I supposed to be serious?" And then he just come out with like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is more of a creepy look than anything. Yeah, else, like but. you just clogged your toilet. <laughs> 
<laughs> he doesn't want you to know. <laughs> so now Jeff's back out here. He's going to do a promo. And Dave Brown points out that Scotty Flamingo from the WCW. And now this is another pet peeve of mine. I've always hated it when people say the WCW. And of course, Bret Hart was the most notable offender of that. And of course, I'm a big Bret Hart fan. But he goes, and the WCW. And I'm like, why do you put the in front of it? But that's just, again, it's nitpicking. But, uh, but anyway, Jarrett talks for a couple minutes and then Scotty Flamingo is actually here in the studio. I thought we were just pointing out that he was going to be there Monday night, but no, he is here. And, uh, I don't know about you guys. I've always been a fan of Scott Levy. I enjoyed Scotty the Body in Portland and Scott Anthony and Global and Scotty Flamingo and WCW and Johnny Polo in the WWF and especially Raven and ECW. He's, he's had a lot of characters if you don't get where I'm going with that. But, uh, where are you guys on Scotty? What do you think of him? Well, I remember the first time I ever saw him was Scott Anthony and Global. And, like, yeah. he was a standout there. You could tell, like, he was going to be somebody. I mean, he was technically before. But, um, yeah, he went from there to WCW, and that was just like a stamp of greatness usually back then. If you made it to WCW, you were something. So seeing him back here, it's like, oh, man, he's 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 on another level now. He's back. Yeah. He's a yeah. big deal. And after this, I enjoyed him as Johnny Polo in the WWF on commentary. I've got some old uh, Coliseum videos where he's doing commentary with Gorilla Monsoon. And he kind of stepped into the Bobby Heenan role when Bobby went to WCW. Uh, Johnny Polo started co-hosting All-American Wrestling with Gorilla. And uh, and he would do some of these videos with, with Gorilla. And I always thought he was hilarious because he was just, he was so goofy in him. And, you know, he'd be like, <laughs> he would mock all the all the cliches that Gorilla had used over the years. You know, he'd be over there, look at him, Gorilla. He's like a man repossessed. He's like, it's man possessed. And he's like, whatever, Gorilla. You know what I'm talking about. And he just, you could just tell he was getting under Gorilla's skin. If, or if not, Gorilla was just really good at acting. But they were a fun combo. And you go back and listen to that now and then picture that, you know, two years later, he's going to be Raven. It's like, wow, yeah. you talk about a character change. Holy but let's uh, let's hear what Scotty has to say here to uh, Jeff Jarrett as he makes his, I guess, return to Memphis. I don't know if you guys remember this. I know you said you first remember him from Global, but his actual Memphis debut was around 1988. He was here as Scotty the Body in like his, I don't know, first, second year in the business. Uh, he was almost used, almost not quite an enhancement guy. He did a little angle with uh, Eddie Gilbert where uh, Eddie Gilbert said he might have promised him a date with Missy Hyde if he, if he beat Lawler and of course Lawler ends up pile driving him. So then he's out there in a neck brace the next week wanting to know if he can get his date with Missy and all this kind of stuff. So it was kind of fun. That's the first thing I remember him from, but he didn't stand out like he did here. Let's check this out. But with that open door policy, you don't get to rest on your laurels from the WCW Scotty Flamingo. That's exactly right. Just like you said, you don't get to rest around, uh, rest, ugh. Still out of breath, Dave. Eh? Right. Don't get to rest very much because, uh, you know, it was a great win. Uh, but this isn't the first time I was a Southern Heavyweight title holder. And I know that the challenges keep coming in. From the WWF, there's a list of guys that want to come in and challenge for this belt. There's a list, uh, a bunch of guys from the USWA, names in the hat. And Scotty Flamingo from the WCW is in the hat. Hey, huh? He's here today, it looks like. Scott Let me say something, Jeff Jarrett. I hear you out here talking. You're talking about boards. You're talking about chairs. You're talking about stuff like that. The kitchen sink. Well, Scotty Flamingo, hey, shut your mouth. Scotty Flamingo does not need the kitchen sink or any of these other objects to beat you up. He was hold for hold, move for move, and counter for counter. Scotty Flamingo is the greatest wrestler in the sport today. I'm the former world light heavyweight champion from World Championship Wrestling. I'm the four, I'm the greatest athlete in the sport. Jeff Jarrett, you come out here. You got all your little fans. Thank you for a few times in just a few minutes. So you can just march on out of here. March out of here. Listen, let me tell you something about. I'm going to take your Southern belt. I'm going to take it Monday night in Memphis. I'm going to take the belt and put it around my waist. And you know what else is even better? Brian Christopher has come out and he has put, I have to come out, but apparently there is a bounty. There's a bounty put out on you. So if I happen to injure you, so Brian Christopher's got a bounty out on me. I'm talking, Jack. You listen to me when I'm talking. I'm from World Championship Wrestle. You're just a little local star here. You're a local hero. I'm a national star. I'm a main event on national television. You're a local star. You're nothing. So you listen when I'm talking. There's a bounty, and it's reading the box. So after I beat you and take the belt, if I decide to hurt you too, 
add just a little extra money for Scotty Flamingo. Because let me tell you, I'm Scotty Flamingo, the fresh thing in town. Listen to these rhymes, because I'm going to throw down. If you don't like me, and you feel kind of froggy, well, jump in my face, and I'll leave you groggy. I'm the king in the ring with a belt, not a crown. And when I'm in the spotlight, I'm the toughest thing around. You ever had to face me? You'll soon be leaving town because weevils wobble, but I don't fall down. <laughs> okay, your response to that. So we just debuted a tag team that we're going to label the hip hop tag team. We're, they're rappers and all this stuff. So, uh, yeah, Scotty, won't you come out here and do your little rap? Like, it's so conflicting. Yeah. It's like they didn't talk to each other in the back, but you thought you would, you would think that Lawler or Jerry Jarrett, whoever's, whoever's in charge this week, like, you know, somebody was, Hey, maybe, uh, don't do the rap, you know? Yeah. I mean, I will give you a kiss if Dusty didn't come up with that gimmick and be like, he looked like Rico Suave, baby. <laughs> so I funny. You should mention that very quickly um me and ray russell talked about this on a video cast and he questions the timing of it all but i remember watching one of those kayfabe commentaries dvds and uh they were actually discussing ecw but uh scotty points out that at one point before he actually went there in 92 as scotty flamingo he was trying to get hired by wcw and he pitched dusty Rhodes the gimmick of a white rapper and he did some raps for him on the phone. And Dusty's like, well, I like it, baby, but I think uh, they got a spot for you right now. And then next thing you know, he's watching his TV and freaking PN News shows up. <laughs> <laughs> and then a year later, Dusty brings him in as Scotty Flamingo. And obviously the time has passed on the on the rapper thing. Uh, but I find that, you know, I don't know. Like I said, Ray was like, I don't know, man. That timing don't like exactly line up. But it kind of does, really, because that would have been a year before he actually came in. And, uh, you know, that's that's a dusty thing to do, because if I'm going to have a if I'm going to have a rapping guy, I'm, I'm probably going to go more of the PN news than the Rico Suave thing, since he doesn't have the accent to go with it. Unless you tried to make him do a phony <laughs> accent, which would have been entertaining, but probably not in the way that they needed or intended to. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, past the rap there, Jarrett tells Flamingo uh, in Memphis, we don't do we don't talk. We do our talking in the ring. Now, we have a lot of episodes that would uh, <laughs> disprove that theory. We do a lot of talking in Memphis. We do mostly talking yeah. on this TV show in Memphis. What are you talking about, Jeff? Just look at the look at the worn-out floor tile from where Dave has walked back in front of the, the desk and back to his seat at the desk. Uh, exactly. They talk every other segment. Yes. I mean, the show is mostly talking, so I thought that was pretty funny. Um, so this, so Jeff challenges Scotty Flamingo to come get in the ring with him. And initially, at least this didn't go the way that I thought it would go. I don't know about you guys, but I thought that, all right, well, Jeff's going to clean his clock. Somebody's going to come in and save him, but check this out. Well, I guess that's supposed to impress me, big boy, but here in the USWA, like I said, we're not in Atlanta and we're not in New York city. We're in Memphis, Tennessee. So we don't talk around here. We do our talking in the ring. So come on. We ain't got to wait for money. All right. There's the challenge. It's open right here. The ring awaits. There's a referee. Apparently, I'm going to have to humiliate him right here in Memphis in front of his local fans on his local television set. A big national star. We're going to have to embarrass him right now. Well, let's see. Uh, let's see what happens right here. Jeff waits in the ring. Scotty Flamingo is there. Yeah, there goes Flamingo, jumps in there, and boy, is he going to work on Jeff Jarrett, son. Stomping away on Jeff. Scotty Flamingo from the WCW, and uh, he is some type of wrestler, too. Heard a lot about him. But he's got Jeff Jarrett, who's out of day. Jarrett goes to work on Flamingo now. Oh, look at how Brian Christopher has just hit the ring. Hey, Jeff knocked him down. Yeah. Oh, Christopher and Flamingo. Jump on Jeff. Scotty Flamingo. Down on the way on Jeff there while Brian Christopher holds on. And it's some type of bounty that Flamingo said. Christopher's got on Jeff in there. 
Here comes Teddy Gilbert to help out, and there goes Scotty Flamingo, and there goes Brian Christopher out of the ring. Yeah, I saw Eddie Gilbert comes in and evens things up, and uh, Flamingo and Christopher decide to hightail it out here. But they're out here celebrating as though that they have just won a main event. They have not. They've been run out of the ring, but hey, what this Flamingo's trouble. Corey, you mentioned you'd, uh, you, you, that I think most wrestling fans probably are familiar with him. He's tough, there's no doubt about it. Jeff's got his work cut out. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm expecting, all right, Jeff's in the ring first. Scotty's going to slide in. Jeff's going to commence to, you know, beating him up. Then Brian's under to come in. Scotty sweeps his feet out from under him, slides <laughs> in, and commences to whooping his ass for <laughs> a good minute or so uh, before Jeff finally turned it around. Um, and, you know, Eddie Gilbert is kind of selling into his spot here as being the resident savior of the baby faces here because every <laughs> week now Eddie is having to run out and save somebody, whether that's anybody he's, you know, feuding with or not. So thank goodness. Uh, we know Jerry Lawler's here, but Jeff's good friend and tag team partner couldn't be bothered to come out right now. I guess he had his mind on other things. So thankfully, Eddie Gilbert. Came out, made the save, and now we have to assume it's time to move on. Let's hear from Sun. Wait, what? No, no, we got one more promo from Jeff Jarrett. He goes over, uh, he goes over to the desks and uh, and makes a statement that for years wrestlers have come into the USWA and tried to take out Jerry Lawler to make a name for themselves, and now it seems that people want to do the same with Jeff Jarrett, which. Seems to me like a pretty on-the-nose description of how they're trying to book him recently. What would you guys take on that? It does seem that way. But, I mean, like, obviously, they need somebody else. And it seemed like Jeff was going to be that guy. You know, like, and it really became known that that was probably the way it needed to go because you started seeing years later, fast forward in time, Jeff's, the new champion and they're mm -hmm. leaning towards more him more him than lawler lawler may not even show up so like you could see that's the way this was progressing and i like how they kind of like pointed it out made it obvious you know in my mind yeah i like i like to think though if listening to that clip and this is a little off topic uh, that Corey showed Dave a picture and he said what do you think of my landscaping and he said boy this flamingo is trouble <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what made me laugh it sure I, is in there. i've never heard somebody say boy this flamingo is trouble <laughs> you know you're right you, we just lost uh uh bill bill just left for wcw yeah. so memphis has always seemed to have that one two connection kind of like you know wwe back in the day where they you know hogan would make the a towns and then they would have somebody on the b towns running the running the thing so you have you know lawler when he can't be there you still have a top guy that's your top baby face so i think that was kind of what they were doing here with Jarrett. it just makes you wonder did they realize how soon after jeff would be following suit and going to the you know they're, they're kind of putting their eggs in the Jeff Jarrett basket, but it won't be too long after Jerry that he's going to start doing more. He's going to start taking more WWF bookings than Lawler, honestly. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we'll get there in, in due time. Um, and so I, when I went to watch this show, I didn't realize that this this was this show uh, the first time I watched it a couple weeks ago. And so, holy shit, all of a sudden we see a WWF produced video of the macho man, Randy Savage. And so I assumed, you know, we're showing this video. I'm like, all right, Randy's coming in to wrestle Lawler, just like with Kurt Hennig. We're just going to see this, this video. We may even see a video interview from Stanford of Randy talking about this match like we did with Kurt Hennig. But next thing you know, this video ends and holy crap, this has... Oh, yeah. There he is, the macho man himself, Randy Savage, right here today. Oh, yeah, he says. I don't know you, but I know you, and I know myself. I'm the macho man, Randy Savage. Tower of power, too sweet to be sour. Funky like a monkey. Sky's the limit, space is the place, and Black Monday. Black Monday is at the Mid-South Coliseum. When I come back to do the thing, 
I'm the king in the <laughs> ring in the Big South Coliseum. Oh, yeah. Say, Brown, you don't even understand what's happening right now, do ya? What's happening is we're unifying the whole thing because of the fact that I am a two-time World Wrestling Federation champion and I've beaten them all. Oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, Black Monday at the Mid-South Coliseum, there's something that I want to say to the king because we got history. Yeah. We got history. You don't know that we got history. You know that we got history. But I want to tell him face to face. I'm not the type of individual like he is where he talks behind people's back. I like to look at a guy in his eyes, yeah, because then I can see the fear in his eyes. Jerry the King Lawler, the living legend, comes to an end on Black Monday, yeah. Bring him out here right now, because there's something that I want to tell him, yeah. I don't know if he wants to come out here right now. The King, though. Uh, he can pretty well back up everything he says, no matter where he says it. So I don't know if you guys realize this, but this would be the very first time Randy Macho Man Savage has set foot in that studio since 1985 when he left and went to the World Wrestling Federation just a few months after Jimmy Hart went there. So uh, pretty cool. And, you know, regardless of how you know anybody may feel about the status of WWF stars like Doink the Clown and Giant Gonzalez and even Lex Luger. No one can argue. Randy Savage is a tippy top main event, big, big star. And this guy's headlined WrestleManias. He's been the very top guy in the WWF. Now at this very moment, he may not have necessarily been, but that doesn't change his status in the business. And it certainly doesn't you know change the the wow factor of having him walk out in the studio and uh dave brown looked like he was very nervous when uh randy grabbed a hold of his tie but what'd you guys think watching this i was happy man that video you mentioned the video before we watched this clip you said it was a wwf produced video it had to have been and it kind of it just made that jeff jarrett video look even worse <laughs> i mean it was yes. night and day. It was, I thought it was so good. Savage had to have had a hand like in direct, in the direction of it. Cause it was a lot of really good shots. And then I was thinking, because you know, you're just watching it. That's all you're going to get from Savage because it would show like clips of matches and this and that. And then it just have him in front of a green screen. Like, oh, yeah, macho man. And then it would just be a real quick speaking thing back to wrestling. But yeah, night and day with those videos. But whenever he walks out there, that star power, man, you can't see anything else. He's dressed in the full garb, not being all lazy, you know, wearing his shredded jeans and cowboy boots. Like he's full gimmick, full macho yep. man. And, you know, at this point, I'm worried. I'm like, man, Lawler's going to come out here in that purple shit he had on last <laughs> week. And it's just, it's not going to look good. With the shirt with a large woman on it, some jeans. <laughs> I mean, my thing is, you look at the background, though. Uh, Corey Macklin looks like he's just as disappointed that he opened up his bag of popcorn and only like four kernels popped. He never smiled. We have a big time WWE guy here. And the whole time he's just frowning in the back, like to, in order to pay macho man, they took it out of his salary or something. Do you think it's a boo-boo face? Because when macho first come out, he said, I know you, I don't know you. And I know myself. Cause you know, like when honky came out, Corey came out from the desk. Hey, Corey, Michael, honky talk. so before he could even get a chance to introduce himself, macho man's like, don't know you don't care. <laughs> uh, because yeah, you're right. In the background, he looked like a kid who just got told, no, we're not going to McDonald's. We got McDonald's at home. And he's just like, there's bullshit in there. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so I, I'm wondering now if the reason Eddie Gilbert had to come out and make the save for Jared is because Lawler was quickly putting on his gear back there that he was up there wearing like a Lawler's Army T-shirt and some yeah. sweatpants, and then he sees Savage come out, and he's like, oh, God, I, I can't go out looking yeah. like a goof. And he's like, Be right back. 
Make Jeff yeah. do three segments. I gotta go run back home and grab my gear. <laughs> and Jeff do another promo. <laughs> another promo. Jeff been out here for thirty minutes. Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell Scotty to rap again. I don't know. I got to put these things on my arms. Uh, all the shit to put on. But, <laughs> so uh, Savage calls out Lawler, and uh, Lawler comes out. And so again, as I as I clicked on this video to watch it the first time, I did not expect to see Macho Man Randy Savage and Jerry Lawler face to face in the TV studio this morning. Because, like Josh pointed out, like. I mean, I would have, I would have probably been down to buy a ticket just if all we saw was that WWF produced promo and maybe just him in front of the green screen going, "Yeah, Monday night, I'm coming down there, Lawler." Yeah, I'd be like, "Oh yeah." And then when that comes off the screen, I'm expecting Dave Brown to be like, "Yeah, we're going to see Randy Savage Monday night," and then you, he's coming through the curtain like, "Whoa, what's happening here?" So uh, let's see what the King had to say once he came out here and, and confronted Macho Man face to face again. First time these guys have shared the screen together since 1985. We're almost a decade here. Hey, Jerry the King Waller, do you remember who I am and what I look like? Yeah, I'm a guy to star. Looking down on you, big guy. Yeah. Black Monday, Miss South Carolina. Gonna be the macho man. Walking all over you. People all over the world, billions of people all over the world, they're waiting to find out. What's going to happen after the smoke clears? But I already know. Jerry Lawler, I already know. And you know something right now? You know too, don't you? You're speechless, aren't you? No, I'm not speechless. You're speechless. No, I think it's just that Slim Jim breath that's starting to get Well, let me just say this, Randy, Macho Man Savage. I, I watched. I watched your video. And it was very impressive. And without a doubt, you have done it all, and you have beaten them all, Randy Savage. You're right. That's right, you have. You wrestled in Pontiac, Say Michigan. It again, wrestle. You wrestled in Pontiac, Michigan in front of 93,000 people. The largest indoor crowd to ever witness any kind of sporting Ooh, yeah. event, any Super Bowls or anything. Yeah, you've done it all. You've beaten... Hulk Hogan, yes, you've oh, yeah. beaten every superstar in the World Wrestling Federation, and you've held their World Heavyweight Championship belt twice, right? Exactly. I just told you that bottom line. Yeah. You scared, aren't you? No, I'm yes, not scared, are. Randy Macho Man Savage. I'm excited. I'm excited that a wrestler of your caliber right. has seen fit to come to my hometown of Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee is my hometown, Randy Savage. And sure, you've conquered the World Wrestling Federation. You've done it all, yes, and you've beaten yeah. them all. But right here in Memphis, Tennessee, no, I don't carry the crown low. I wear the crown proudly, brother, because I am the king of wrestling here. I have always been the king of wrestling, and I will always be the king of wrestling. Oh. <laughs> uh. Sorry, I have been laughing because <laughs> ever since that clip showed, Josh was talking about how good the the video was for Macho Man and how bad the one yeah. was for Jeff Jarrett. And then you said that you would be more inclined to go to the Memphis shows just for the video for Macho Man. And I was thinking of Corey going, and we're going to have the guy that made Jeff's music video there and for five dollars you can throw a rock at him <laughs> you can tell him everything that sucked about his damn video <laughs> oh my god yeah but you're right man like we should have saved that jeff jarrett video till next week because showing oh. them within 10 minutes of each other yeah. i mean it, it shows that you know one one company's playing checkers and the other's playing chess or you know something <laughs> completely different but uh, good promo there. I mean, Lawler went out of his way to to sing Savage's praises and put over everybody's beaten because Lawler knows as soon as this promo ends, he's going to run one of those highlight reels of him beating all these different big stars that come through Memphis, sung to the tune of Bon Jovi's "Wanted Dead or Alive," uh, just to remind Macho Man, like, "Hey, I've I've, I've beaten everybody." So, what makes you think you're not going to be next? But uh, I've really, I've really noticed watching all these shows week in and week out in in succession like this. Uh, the King really went to the well on that 
Memphis thing, you know, to really get that crowd behind him. Yeah, he said, if you go back in this in this promo alone and count the number of times he said, "Here in Memphis, my people in Memphis, 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 Memphis." Uh, which is, I mean, it's smart, but I, I just I forgot. I didn't really realize back in the day how much he he leaned into that, you know. And uh, why wouldn't he? Yeah, you can tell street violence wasn't as high as it is now either, too, because. Boy, it would be different now if they did that, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Everybody comes but, out I mean, fight. Sus versus them, man. <laughs> you got to give it up for that Slim Jim breath line, though. That was yeah. a, that popped Corey. You can see Corey finally smiled back there. <laughs> I like Slim Jim breath in there. But thank God Lawler showed up with the shitty war on that horse whenever he came <laughs> to the you know the big event. Because yes. if he came with any outfit mm-hmm. like. Like I said, wearing that purple shit from last week or whatever, it would have looked like the Jarrett video and the Macho <laughs> Man video standing right there beside each other. Like, thank God. Like, Lawler dressed like he was going to like a weird church, but he dressed like he was going to church. <laughs> you know, it's like we haven't seen him that dressed up in years. Yes, it was his his fanciest of outfits that he owns. But I take it he must have known that Macho Man was going to bring it because. As much as I like to joke about, it, he was back there quickly changing after the, the Macho Man came on screen. I'm sure they had been sitting back there together for the entirety of the morning. Of you know, what are you going to say, Lawler? Because you know, Savage famously <laughs> likes to you know rehearse everything. So I'm sure he hey they had ran through that promo. And then what are you going to say? I'll tell him that you beat Hogan. I'll tell him Pontiac, Michigan. Tell him about Pontiac, Michigan. So don't say I lost though. Uh, I didn't win that one. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's uh, super cool to have the Macho Man here this week. And I'm excited to see, you know, Giant Gonzalez pop the gate. You know, we, we drew 3,000 people last week for the Giant Gonzalez show. Uh, and he's, you know, was brand new to WWF and, uh, you know, really wasn't established and he was a heel. So can you imagine what the gate's yeah. going to ha- gonna do with the Macho Man here this week? But right now. We're going to take our first podcast commercial break of the day. When we come back, uh, it's going to be time to talk about that middleweight title tournament we had last Monday night. This is Wrestling Nostalgia, the podcast that dives into wrestling history. Hey, wrestling fans, I'm Dave Dynasty. And if you enjoy podcasts that are knowledgeable and history-driven, then Wrestling Nostalgia is for you. With great guests and fun interviews, there are over 200 episodes in our archives. We chat with several first-time guests and often cover topics not discussed on other podcasts. Look up Wrestling Nostalgia on your favorite podcast platform and visit all of our links at linktree slash wrestlepod. That is L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash R-A-S-S-L-E-P-O-D. And remember, where we go, what we do, be good, be safe, and keep on growing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling. The podcast that's based on the old school, but can still help you find the good stuff from today. Jimmy Street and the Plastic Sheik, Jared, are the undisputed tag team champions of the wrestling podcast world. From thought-provoking topics, to superstar interviews, to action figure expertise. This team does it all, and all they ask is, give me back my pro wrestling! Every other Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey guys, this is Wolfie D from PG-13. Check out my podcast, Live and in Color with Wolfie D, every Monday at noon. We're talking Memphis, we're talking ECW, WCW, WWF, everywhere that I've been. We even have some great guests, some Hall of Famers on the show with us. Every Monday at noon, Live and in Color with Wolfie D. All right, guys, so let's uh, let's take a look at some highlights of the USWA middleweight title tournament last week. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit about it after we see exactly what happened. Oh, big move from Miss Texas. Got a ball to look at what they did over there. Grabs Miss Texas by a leg and shoves her down. Oh, Jamie Dundee's got it covered. He got a one, two, three. Referee Paul Neighbors. Oh, goes to stop him, and that's the terror. 
Just shoves Danny Davis down. Davis still going for the mask, though. Throws the chain in the ring. Davis grabbed the chain and lost it. Hey, but the mask is down. Picks it up. He got it. Oh, Danny Davis gets the one, two, three. Davis, none of the way on Dundee. Oh, boy. Just caught referee Frank Morelli there. Right in the back of the head, and Dundee falls out. Rolls Davis over. He's got him covered. Two, three, he got it. Oh boy! One, two, three. Four minutes and 46 seconds. Jamie Dundee makes history and is the USWA middleweight heavyweight champion in four minutes and 46 seconds. Corey says he has made history as Jamie and D is the USWA middleweight heavyweight champion. <laughs> Just depends on what planet is on. Different gravitational pulls. We thought it was the same deal as light heavyweight. You know, what is not the middle too. People are just used to throwing heavyweight in between whatever they say in championships. So like, middleweight, heavyweight championship. So a couple of uh, interesting things there. Number one, I assume that the middleweight heavyweight title matches took place before the Southern heavyweight title matches. And since you pointed this out earlier and I found it to be interesting too, we see the exact same scenario that we were going to see later with Brian and Jeff, except this time it played out exactly as we expected where uh, Danny moves out of the way and master of terror clocks Burt Prentice off the apron. Danny Davis rolls him up one, two, three. So I guess in the in the Jarrett and Brian Christopher match, it was almost like a callback or like, all right, so this is going to play out like it happened earlier. But if you're looking at it from that perspective, you sh you're probably going to think, well, why would Prentice try this again? It didn't work worth a shit earlier in the night. <laughs> that time it worked perfect. You know, he was able to walk right over and punch Jeff. But uh, they get the win over Miss Texas with Wolfie tripping up Miss Texas and Jamie dropping an elbow across the back of her head. And then... Yes. He gets the win over Uncle Danny with Wolfie putting the hubcap up against his dome and knocking him out. And then we have history made with our first ever USWA middleweight heavyweight champion, J.C. Ice of PG-13. Um, and then PG-13 comes out for a promo. Uh, <laughs> let's hear what these guys have to say about their first big title win here after their debut on television last week. All right, here's the music, and uh, PG-13 headed this way right here. Jamie Dundee of PG-13 wearing the USWA Middleweight Championship belt. Yeah, well... Hey, what's up? Look, look, everybody in the whole world happy for PG-13. Look at this stage now, right here. If they can see this right here, zoom in. It's a set. Chelsea Clinton, birthday girl, asked to see... PG-13, brother. Right there, look at it, I don't think that's all it says. Let me read some of this for you. It says, Chelsea Clinton said, PG-13 is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's talk about wrestling. Let's talk about the wrestling matches. Let's talk. You've got a match coming up, as a matter of fact, with Ms. Texas. What do you think about Ms. Texas? Matter of fact, I noticed that without your timely interference, she might have even beaten your partner over here. I didn't interfere, man. She hit the ropes and she was looking at me because I'm so fly. She was looking at me, man. As you hit the ropes, she tripped because she was, oh, 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 Wolfie, he's bad. Oh, boom, he's bad, man. And he just jumped, jumped on top right of me. Well, let's talk about what do we tell you, Dave Brown? Take a look at it. USWA middleweight champion, PG-13, baby. We are the middleweight champion of the USWA. Well, I think we is a good description after well, seeing how you work. I, I say we because, you know, I'm wonderful. Wolfie's wonderful. So together, we're just great. So we, what we say, but I beat everybody with an open hand slap and covered them all and made me the official yeah. middleweight champion of the world. Hey, Corey. How you doing, my Oreo brother? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they got me. <laughs> that line got me. <laughs> <laughs> you got Corey, too. Uh, <laughs> 
All right. So uh, what did you think of the promo there besides the end line, obviously? Well, I was happy to see Mr. Uncle Danny went to the trophy shop and just got that little plate for it says USWA for five bucks or whatever. and Just throw it up there. Don't worry about that global wrestling federation above it. Don't no. worry about that. But I mean, it is cool that seeing somebody like Jamie come out as the champion, you know, at least it added a little bit of credibility because of all the antics and stuff Jamie was a part of before earlier you know, in this area, yeah. it was yeah. like, he's just a sneaky little shit. He'll never be nothing. But like this, no matter how he won it showing, he won this in a singles match. It kind of gave them, you know, a little bit of something when they were coming in there and nobody know who the fuck Wolfie D was. And they just knew Jamie is that little pipsqueak runt, you know, it added a little bit of spice to it. I agree. I mean, it, it, it looked like Jamie was on his, on the path to being, the next downtown Bruno, you know, the little scrawny manager that picks his spots and jumps in and interferes, runs away, and then gets beat up when the time comes. But uh, this show that, hey, we're actually going to make a wrestler out of this guy. What was your take, Richard? Yeah, I mean, I I thought having the two guys like that should be going after a tag title boast about how they basically swindled the title away and cheated. I mean, I thought that was a great, great twist to it. You know, they're not, they're a tag team, but they're trying to rule that singles division and they're going to do it together. And I like the way he said, you know, we're the middleweight yeah. champion. I, I thought right. that was pretty cool. Um, I do, I do think that we should go back and like, look at the ring that he wanted in uh, the far post that they were in was wobbling like crazy and i got tickled earlier when i was talking to josh and i was like i imagine Corey and before the show started was like anybody got a mig welder because <laughs> this <laughs> post is uh whoo y'all stay out of that corner it's just gonna collapse at any point so i think we could probably go back and if we did like the whole wwe angle where they reversed the match because the rope broke we yeah. should reverse it where uncle danny won that title i think you know it's just bullshit that he lost. There's that. a case to be made for sure. Yeah. Um, I feel like too that if the Harlem Knights were supposed to debut that night, Corey mm -hmm. Macklin's like, uh oh, uh oh, <laughs> not tonight, not tonight. That ring can't take it. That ring right. cannot take it. <laughs> More on that later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So PG 13, they've got a match today. Let's uh let's see uh how the White Tiger and Ron Hutchings fares against the new tag team middleweight champion. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's tell you, these guys, if they would wrestle, and make it get something done in there, but all oh, they got to hop around and all of that. PG-13, tag on Whoopi D. I've got a big body slam from Jimmy Dundee. Whoopi D up on the top rope. Drop Jake on Ricky Hutchings. Not very sportsmanlike, to say the least. Not at all. Look at that move. Jamie Dundee come over the ropes after. Wolfie D whipped the white tiger into the ropes, and Dundee catches him with the tennis shoe, you may want to call it. This wrestling time is PG-13 comes in there with. Very unusual, but you got to give it to him. These guys can wrestle, though. Wolfie D sets up the white tiger. Brings him off for it. He's Nelson with that hubcap. White Tiger's out, too, boy, after Jamie Dundee nailed him with that hubcap. Whoopi D's got him covered. One, two, three, and PG-13 gets the win, and that's going to do it over the White Tiger and Ricky Hutchins. And they brought the hubcap into it. They didn't need to. They could have pinned him earlier, but they refused to do it. We'll be back with more from the USWA right after this. There you see it. Slingshot up into the hubcap. That was a brutal finish, right? <laughs> Yeah. Right the white tiger in all black rest in peace <laughs> yeah. he was wearing the appropriate color man they oh. fucking killed him like it, it it looked like he had red <laughs> on his mask like it, it was did. a legit deal just a pool of blood under his head <laughs> as they pit him but uh you know, again they used the hubcap to get the win but they shot off some cool double team yeah. using teamwork along the way uh, when the video starts there and uh, Corey's like, oh, these guys could be great. They got to do all that. I'll hop around. and <laughs> Y'all keep calling the hip-hop tag team. I mean, they're going to hop around, I guess. But uh, Uncle Danny's not happy. Um, 
he's not happy at all about how this went down. And he actually has, he's not here today. He's not in the studio like Randy Savage. Uh, but he has sent in a promo that apparently was shot in a closet somewhere. And uh, <laughs> let's take a look at this and tell me if you think I'm wrong. JC Ice, Jamie Dundee. I guess you're feeling like you're on top of the world right now. Probably bragging about how you whipped me all over that arena. Well, let me tell you something, Jamie. If it takes blacking your eye, if it takes knocking some of your teeth out, or if it takes breaking your nose, Jamie Dundee, I promise you one thing. That's something that I'm going to do because I'm not going to let you or Wolfie D stop me from being the new USWA middleweight champion. He had to cut the promo at the 7 Eleven That's what it looks like. Like, I mean, you know, the video quality of that, that whole show is not great, but that promo in particular, the video quality is just awful. And you, hear I like, guarantee you, I 100% guarantee you, because he would carry a video camera and shit with him sometimes. I yeah. guarantee you that was his video camera and he just send it to them there, there's been foreign hostage videos with better quality than that thing <laughs> i mean completely whited out he could have been the white tiger because i mean it's completely <laughs> just whited out and and you hear like in the background like he was in the in the closet or the bathroom at a rave somewhere like hey grab that vhs camcorder over there i gotta shoot a promo because i'm not driving all the way to memphis for <laughs> tv tomorrow so i want to send this tape up there with somebody and uh, they can play it during the show but uh <laughs> uncle danny has sworn revenge and he is going to be coming after that middleweight heavyweight championship <laughs> this week at the mid-south coliseum and so uh, from there, we, we get a promo from the king of rock and roll, Doug Gilbert, uh, who says the USWA isn't big enough for him and his brother. Claims to be the king of rock and roll, Dirty Doug Gilbert has arrived. They, you said claims. How many people do you know that can dance like that? I am the king of rock and roll. Hey, Dave, I got a beautiful audience today. Don't want to look at them. Uh, they're, not, they're not that beautiful. They all come to see me. They love me, Dave. They love me. We got some great fans here today. I'm not sure they're all they here to see you. Name. Okay, when I come out here, look at that bus. Look at that big guy there, Dave. Oh, what a clown he is. Okay, I sit out here all morning long, and I've listened to people say they want to be kings, this and that. But look at me, Dave. I am the king of rock and roll. I dance, I sing. I'm beautiful, ain't I, Dave? But what I'm out here to talk about, Dave, and I'm real fed up with it. I don't guess Eddie Gilbert knows who he's dealing with, does he, Dave? The U.S. What? Hold, on, hold, on, hold on just a second. The USWA, yes, real big. There's a whole lot of stars. Look, show their shoes. You hear what they're saying? Eddie, Eddie. Saying, just hold on. The USWA, yes, real big. But it's not quite big enough for Eddie Gilbert and the king of rock and roll, daddy. So what I'm saying, yeah, he must have had the guts to get that pen in his hand and scribble that name on there, Dave. But then he probably wasn't reading because what it said was the loser must leave town. Amen. That's right. Dave, so what I'm telling you is we'll no longer hear anybody saying, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. What they better get in their mind is king of rock and roll. And also, Eddie Marlin went to the old folks' home. And he found Dutch Mantel somewhere. And he brought him. I'm just going to warm up on him a little bit right now, Dave. And when I, you're going to warm up on Dutch Mantel? Yeah, I'm going to warm up. I'm going to warm up. Look at that. That's Dutch. There. No, hold it. Dutch Mantel is just like Eddie Gilbert. These people have poisoned him. He used to be dirty, Dutch Mantel. Now he's just a dirty dog, his audience. And I'm fixing to beat his brains out. And I'm going to dance a little bit. And I might sing when I get through, Dave. Well, I hope not. But Doug Gilbert is headed for the ring, right? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm hoping I can get Doug to pull off some of those dance moves on a future edition of Dangerous Conversations. <laughs> I'm guessing he's not going to be excited to talk about this era. I may be wrong. It may be his favorite thing, but somehow knowing Doug, I don't think it's going to be. <laughs> but I, I am excited to hear all about it. But he's getting ready to take on uh, Dirty Dutch Mantel. So in theory, that sounds like pretty solid match. You know, Dutch Mantel, this will be the first time we've seen him in action here on TV. He's been coming to the Coliseum and doing some shows and 
around this time, uh, he's mostly doing uh, announcing and co-hosting, I guess you'd say, for the Smoky Mountain show over around Knoxville. And so he's coming over here and having some matches. So let's take a look uh, at a a little bit of clips from from this match between uh, Doug and Dutch and then uh, analyze the, uh, the result of it. Technical difficulties. Boy, over there, what he said, they were waving goodbye to Doug. Yeah. And we'll see what happens. But today, he's going against the Dutchman, and he jumps it while uh, while uh, Dutchman still has that, uh, what, serape on over there, the blanket, whatever you call it. But now he throws Doug out of the ring, and he is ready to go. And here comes Doug. How about it, Doug? Hey, Dave. You know, he didn't give me a chance to get my oh, phone. Oh, so, yeah. You yeah. didn't give him a chance. Who How about that? Boom is what I would like to know. We were watching right here. Gee whiz. Now Doug Gilbert climbs back in the ring. Going against the Dirty Dutchman out of Oil Trump, Texas. This one should be a good one. And look out, Doug. Indeed. Dirty Dutchman town. Put Doug Gilbert into the room. Big back flip on him. Takes Doug down. Now what is, what is yeah. this? Now Doug has, uh, has another timeout, huh? Okay, Dave. I'm just about warm now. I'm fixing to beat his brains out. All right, go get him, Doug. Let's see. Just about warmed up now, he says. Got Dutch Mantel lying in the ring. There's no doubt about that. We better pay attention to the dirty Dutchman. Dutch is out on the mat, though. Doug's on the top rope. Whoa! Oh, my goodness. Oh, gee. Catches a boot from Dutch Mantel. Ooh. Well, right hand. Yeah. yeah, doubled up fist. That could be a mistake. Look at Dutch. Give a left jazz from Doug Gilbert. Whoa! Mantel blocks the right from Doug. Going up to oh boy! Here comes PG-13 in it. Jumping on Dutch Mantel. PG-13 and Doug Gilbert. All on Mantel. Here comes up for Dutch. Hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert. Doug, Doug, and oh, Doug gets out of there, though. And who's leaving the area right now? It is Dirty Doug Gilbert. Eddie Gilbert has just sent his brother out of here. We'll be back with more. So it feels like, you know, they're trying to disprove our theory. So that was a fun match, uh, you know, up until the end. It was a good little match. And then, uh, you know, we talked about last week how it seems like, you know, whenever there's a match that, you know, whoever's in a feud with the, the baby face that heel is going to hit the ring. And then, you know, then the, the baby face is going to make the save, but here, unless you guys know something, I don't, I don't know of any established reason why PG 13 would be running in against Dutch Mantel, nor would I know why they would be running in to help Doug Gilbert. Um, but they did. And of course, it got the desired effect because it got us a disqualification at the end of the match with the DQ, and it gave us a reason to have Eddie come out and make the save against Doug, so they got their match coming up, so there you go. But it just felt really odd that, like, what reason did PG-13 have to run in on this match, you know? Uh, what would you guys take on this? I mean, just looking at it through the – like, when I watch these shows, I kind of try to just completely look at it through the lens of a fan. You know, and so obviously we're going to analyze stuff like we do knowing everything that we know, but I legit try to just watch it that way. And I was puzzled by PG-13 coming out. I figured like maybe Brian was tied up. Bruce Brothers aren't there. Thank God. But <laughs> I mean, like, I think that it was one of those deals to where I would deduce, well, those are bad guys. And I guess Doug just paid them to come help him because he's also a terrible person. Like usually I would come up with stuff like that, but that's the only thing that I could think of. I mean, it's just bad guy association, really. Yeah. Richard. Yeah. uh, Same, same thing. You know, as a kid, I just thought all the bad guys knew each other. So not really weird for me, but now as an adult, yeah, it's like, Zero sense. No sense whatsoever. They don't even, I don't even think they've ever talked to each other, have they? In the times no, that they've, they've never interacted. Not on camera. They've had no association yeah. whatsoever. Um, 
So yeah, it, it's, it, it feels a little odd, but yeah, like you, like if I'm looking back as a kid, I just thought, well, all the bad guys are friends and all the good guys are friends. And that was why it felt weird when there would be a turn. And now all of a sudden, just all the good guys are friends with this guy who used to be a bad guy or vice versa. It's like, why did, you know, okay, yeah. that's weird, but you still just kind of accepted it. So, uh, but anyway, fun little match, a match we haven't seen. Uh, we hadn't seen Dutch in action yet. So always happy to see Dutch Mantel. Uh, you know, I didn't love that Doug, you know, pointed out they found him in an old folks home and everything. I never like that when you ever go, you know, you calling somebody old and all that shit. Cause you know, that whole psychology of, you know, if you beat him, who have you beat? If you beat you, you get beat by the old guy. But then again, Dutch is old. Look at him at the time. So, you know, it's, it's a fair statement, I guess, but we go to a break and we come back. Corey Macklin runs down all the action coming to your local arenas. And Eddie Marlin comes out and introduces a new tag team that we're going to be getting acquainted with here real soon. Uh, usually I wouldn't even show something like this, but I'm fascinated by the voices on these two guys and just remembering at the time, the sight of these two guys walking out on the screen and this being the first time I've seen them, uh, they kind of stand out. Yeah. You know, Curry, we've got a super card in Jonesboro tomorrow night. Got seven big matches already lined up. And I just want to bring these guys out and let the people see them. The Harlem Knights, they came into the USWA a day early, so I said, instead of laying dead here for a day, we'll book you right in Jonesboro tomorrow night. So, fellas, Jonesboro, Arkansas tomorrow night, the big super card with the USWA. Harlem Knights. All you people, shut up. The first thing I want to say, shut up and listen to what we're talking in here. The first thing I want to say is I'm tired of seeing head button, booty shakes, black wrestlers coming out here disgracing our race. It's time for two hard-nosed grapplers to come and prove to the USWA and to the world that we're the best tag team in this business. There's only one person in this business that I care about. And that's my brother, Bobby Knight. So Moon Dogs and USWA, look out, Jonestown, here comes the Harlem Knights. Well, that's the Harlem Knights, and uh, this proves it's going to be a big night over at Sunday night. Jerry the King, Lawler, Jeff, Jared, Eddie, give it all the big stars be right there, including the Harlem Knights. They include the Harlem Knights. Are you guys tired of uh, headbutting and booty shaking? <laughs> Isn't that what the Moon Dogs are known for? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, Dundee Davis, was doing a lot of that in his match earlier, but yeah. I don't think they that's what they were talking about. Hard nosed grapplers are what they are. They are the return, the second coming of Fez <laughs> and Billy Robinson. Frank Gutt, like, that's right. <laughs> dude, I can't wait to see how they work. <laughs> It'll be great. Now, you said something a minute ago. You pointed out that so far, as of now, and we're almost all the way through this show. We've seen no sign of the Harris brothers. And now suddenly and clearly heel tag team has shown up. I don't want to jinx it. Let's not go there yet, but <laughs> I'm, I don't know. That's it's seems suspicious, but uh, right now we've heard from Doug. Let's hear what Eddie Gilbert has to say about what is clearly been established as a loser leaves town match happening between Eddie and Doug this Monday night. At the Mid South Coliseum. Eddie Gilbert joined us right here. I'm sure you heard all the things that Doug had to say earlier. Yeah, David, I'm just scared to death. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to let a little message out to my brother today. Uh, last week, he kind of slipped up and he got one over on me, Dave. Uh, because of, I think between the two of us as brothers, I think the only reason why he got the match and got the victory was because I have a little bit bigger heart than he does. Because Doug knows it just like I do. If I wanted to, Doug, if I'd have kept the figure four on you, I would have broke your leg in half. But you told me, I quit. I quit. I'm sorry. Well, that doesn't mean anything to me anymore. I'm the one that trained you. I'm the one that brought you into the USWA. So you better get on the phone, brother. And you better call Vince McMahon up there in the WWF. And you better call whoever's running WCW this week and ask him for a job. Because after this week... 
I'm going to make sure I send you out of here. And one thing's for sure, you just may be the king of rock and roll because you sure as hell are not the king of wrestling. There's a word from Eddie Gilbert. It's brother against brother, loser leads. Oh, my, guys. You know, uh, <clears throat> you know, Doug was out there dancing around, kind of having some fun in his promo, but Eddie's pretty, Eddie's pretty fired up for this loser leaves town match Monday night. I think the biggest thing there as a kid, I would have been like, Wait, Vince owns Vince runs WWF because as a kid, I would just looked at him as the announcer. Uh, yeah. You could tell there was some bridges must have been uh, some hard feelings must have been between him and WCW because he didn't even give them the respect of even saying who the whoever's running that whoever's running it this week was a yeah yeah pretty um, stiff shot yeah <laughs> but I think a fired up promo there you know kind of talks you into the talks you into the arena with that that kind of promo. But usually when Eddie's pissed off like that and you could tell like he's something's, you know, on his mind, he's a little more uh, bitey than usual. Like usually Eddie being pissed off like this, it's something's fixing to happen. Somebody. Either. I mean, obviously somebody's leaving town, you know, yeah. but you would figure it's got to be Doug, right? There's no way he's going to beat Eddie in a loser leave town. I figured it'd be I figured it'd be Doug winning. I figured I Eddie know. had somewhere going. So, you know, both opposite ends of the spectrum here. I mean, that's, looking, that's looking, fun, back, you never know. Looking back at the timeline, though, this is more than likely around the time Doug goes to Japan, correct? Is that a, is uh, that a he's in and out. Of, he's in and out of Japan around this time. You know, he's, he's by this time, he's starting to establish those tours where he's going over. And that's kind of why you see him in and out of, of Memphis. He'll, He'll go for a couple of months and then he comes back and he works Memphis and here and there. And then he goes, goes back over there. And that's, that's uh, supposedly why he never really signed a long-term contract with none of the American promotions because he wanted that freedom to be able to go to Japan. Cause that was you know, a pretty lucrative deal for him. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, Eddie's, you know, he's a veteran and he seems to be right on time with these promos. You know, last week's, you know, time to bear down promo was, perfect for where we were at in the story and what we had happening and and so now we, we've gotten to a, a, a loser leaves town match and he's he's super fired up at his brother so uh you know exactly exactly what we needed here so i, I thought it was good and next up we get a pre-recorded promo from the only guy who says brother in his promo is more than hulk hogan richard lee and uh He's mad because he's wearing a rag on his head and he said he wasn't going to do that again because apparently the Harris brothers beat the Moon Dogs, but not for the USWA tag team titles, but for Richard Lee's hair this past week. And it would seem that Brian Christopher came down to ringside and knocked out one of the Moon Dogs, allowing the Harris brothers to win. And rather than calling for the 1300th and 27th rematch between the Moon Dogs and the Bruce brothers, <laughs> Richard Lee is looking for revenge on Brian Christopher, it seems. And I guess he's already been told that Brian Christopher is bringing in a former Moondog that Richard Lee fired because he mentions in this promo that the big black dog, the Moondog he fired, the Moondog who his only motivation to fight, it seemed, was to get to the front of the line to the dinner table. Um <laughs> uh, and maybe that's maybe that's what's going to spark Brian's promo here in a minute. Uh, the big black dog is coming to team with Brian Christopher against the Moon Dogs. And if you don't know the big black dog, if you hadn't followed USWA wrestling, if you don't remember uh, the time a while back in '92 uh, during the big feud with the Moon Dogs and uh, you know Lawler and Jarrett and sometimes Robert Fuller, well, let's let Brian uh, tell you about the big black dog. He's big, he's black, and he is mean. There you go. That's uh, what you need to know about him. Uh, <laughs> Josh was mesmerized by his nipples. Dude, <laughs> watching this at home, it is not 4K quality. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's it's, it's yeah. just not. It's an old tape transfer. But I don't give a shit. <laughs> I could see that that man's nipples were at least half an inch, three quarter inch away from his body. It's like he had nipple clamps on before he came out there. Like that is really weird to me. You prepare like, how you prepare. He prepares how he prepares. Josh. God, it's really weird. So, so Brian comes out and rather than being enraged as I expect, so I'm expecting 
that Brian is going to come out. He's going to be beside himself because, you know, a week before he got his face burnt off. Now he's got his Southern title taken from him. What does he have to be happy about? But instead, Brian comes out and he seems pretty happy. Uh, He's bragging to Dave Brown about what a genius he is because after Eddie Marlin told him that the name dogs have challenged him, as he put it, uh, that he was smart enough to bring in the big black dog. And if you've already somehow forgotten <laughs> who and what the big black dog is, let us remember. He's big, he's black, and he is mean. That's right. And he's coming to town to team with Brian Christopher. Uh, oh, wow. Because Brian Christopher calls the Moon Dogs the, t- the, the match last week, calls Richard Lee to have his head shaved. And, and Richard Lee didn't really seem so mad about having a bald head. He's just really mad about having to wear a rag on his head because I guess somebody needs to tell me, oh, Richard, you don't have to wear that rag on your head. If that's the big problem, just <laughs> what, leave it what off. part of the stipulation? Yeah, just wear that cap you're always wearing. It's cool. Uh, but apparently, more so than Richard Lee, more so than Spot, Brian has a huge problem with Moondog Splat as he just really goes in on Moondog Splat about what a big, fat, piece of trash he is and he's just 400 pounds of lard and we talked about before we started recording i was asking like was it just me or did brian just really seem to have an axe to grind with moondog splat and you guys like yeah <laughs> it seemed to me what did you think about this promo here from brian i'm not going to show clips we're kind of running long on time but what did you think of this promo from brian and were you guys surprised that there was really no mention of the Southern title, even though earlier in the show, and we didn't mention this earlier as we got sidetracked with raps and things of that nature, but apparently Brian has put a bounty on uh, on Jeff Jarrett, but here he makes no mention of it. What, what, what do you guys think about that? Well, you know, Brian is extremely materialistic, and he has been the Texas champion for like two and a half years at this point, And he brought the belt. Now, mind you, USWA's last foray in Texas was like summer of 91. So like how big of a Texas champion is he really? But he still got the belt and he's still wearing it. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a really good, like the way that he's, he's, he's bringing in an old face, somebody that's probably the two moon dogs put together. Isn't bigger than the big black dog, but, yeah, he is totally shitting on Splat. Like, Splat sliced his tires or something. Like, he's calling him a piece of trash, fat tub of lard. I brought this guy in just so I don't have to touch you. He literally said that. Yeah. Like, I don't know, man. It, it's really weird. It's It's, it's got to be personal. Is it weird that I give myself that same speech in the mirror every morning, though? <laughs> trying to put your belt on yeah. <laughs> you're a fat piece of lard are you, are you just going to clip that brian christopher promo now so you don't have to say it to yourself you'll just hit right. a button and let's listen to brian say all these things i'm like i know he's talking about me i yeah. know he's talking about me <laughs> i'm gonna do better all right <laughs> well let's see a, let's see a little clip of this tag team match here and uh get a, a little sample of the big black dog in action along with brian christopher but mostly Mostly the big black dog. Big black dog and Brian Christopher come up against Ken Raper and T.D. Steele and the black dog goes over. Bill Raper and T.D. Steele. While Brian Christopher is having a fun time, black dog takes on Raper and Steele. Yeah, Christopher sent him in there two against one and said, take care of both of them. So far, Brian's just been dancing around. Well, there he gets into the action with a boot to T.D. Steele. And Christopher's got Steele, and Black Dog just threw Ken Raper out on the floor. The Raper is out on the concrete floor, and Christopher's got T.D. Steele. And he's telling Black Dog to come off with that flag. Oh, boy, he catches T.D. Steele with it and puts him out, too. Christopher picks up Steele. Well, CD down and takes Big Black Dog. Black Dog comes off the rope. Drops all of that weight on TD Steel. Two, three, he got him. But it didn't take long for Big Black Dog and Brian Christopher to get the one, two, three victory. All right. 
pretty uh, decisive win there. Big Black Dog takes the victory, and, and you know, guys know why? He's big, he's black, and he is mean. <laughs> As advertised, he certainly <laughs> is. So it's going to be... Uh, Quite the showdown this week as they take on the Moon Dog. So let's go and take our uh, second and final podcast commercial break. And when we come back, Dave and Corey is going to run down the Mid South Coliseum card, and then we get to talk about what happened at the Mid South Coliseum this week. When we come back. <laughs> Hey guys, Ray Russell here, curator of the WrestleCopia Podcast Network, inviting you guys to listen to many of the programs here as part of the WrestleCopia brand, including, but not limited to, the Wrestling Memory Grenade, currently covering the 1988 and the WWF project. You can also listen to the Regional Wrestling Podcast, where we talk the territories, whether it's Jamie Ward with Georgia 81, Roman Gomez with the UWF in 1986, or Gene Jackson covering Memphis in 85. Three projects going on right now over there at Regional Wrestling. You can also listen to the Wrestling Stoop with the legend himself, Bob Roop. Bob goes back in time each and every week, covering not just his career, but countless stories and interactions with hundreds of wrestling names spanning his two decades in the business. But that's not all. You can also check out the Puro Wrestling Academy with the professor of Puro Resu, Mr. Dan Ginnity. Dan and I go back in time and cover the history of Japanese professional wrestling in the English language. And you can listen to all of those shows and more, all part of the WrestleCopia Podcast Network, located over at WrestleCopia.com. That's WrestleCopia.com and anywhere your podcast streaming needs are met, from Apple to Spotify, Pocket Cast, and beyond. And while you're at it, why not subscribe to our social media guys for all the latest goings on here at the WrestleCopia Podcast Network Plus. I'm constantly adding old school video clips and pictures from throughout wrestling history. You can follow us over on X, formerly Twitter, at Wrestling Grenade. That's at R A S S L I N Grenade. Also, follow and like me, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Grenade. And why not subscribe to YouTube.com slash Wrestling Grenade? So if you're looking to support that next up and coming podcast brand, please consider making it WrestleCopia. All right, let's hear it. Let's find out what this has all been about. Let's hear what the matches are going to be this Monday night at the Mid South Coliseum. Big night coming up. Oh, Mid South Coliseum. I think if you uh, if you have uh, already seen the card, you'll agree. If uh, you missed it earlier, uh, take a look at uh, this right here. PG thirteen, the team of Jamie Dundee and Wolfie D. They made some noise in the USWA. These guys are putting together a win streak. They're going to be going against Hurricane Hatchet and Miss Texas. That should be interesting now, right there. That's the opening bout of the night. That's just that. the beginning. That's right. Middleweight title match coming up. Danny Davis, uh, if you have saw that uh, videotape a little bit earlier, I think you'll agree Danny Davis perhaps should have been the middleweight champion, but for some timely interference there by, uh, by Wolfie D. But uh, regardless of how you feel about it, uh, Jamie Dundee is the middleweight title holder, but he's going to have to defend it this week against Danny Davis. Then, loser leave town match coming up. Oh, everybody was uh, saying to Doug, na 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 na, hey, hey, goodbye. That when Eddie appeared. What will happen Monday night at the Coliseum? And what will happen in the grudge match? The Moon Dogs with Richard Lee. That's who the opponents will be for Brian Christopher and the Big Black Dog. Come Monday night, should be a, probably a much different story than the yeah. match in which Christopher and Big Black Dog figured here today. Southern title will be on the line then, Jeff Jarrett. We'll be going against Scotty Flamingo, but that's not all. The Macho Man, Randy Savage, Can't wait for this one. comes to town to challenge the king, Jerry Lawler. There he is. He'll be at the Coliseum Monday night. We'll be right back here next week. We hope you'll join us then yeah. for more USWA Championship Wrestling. All right, guys. We just went through an entire episode of this show, and then Dave and Corey ran down the card. And I have to ask... Has Josh's dream come true? We said that it seems like this episode, they're going back retroactively 30-something years and, and, and righting wrongs. Are the Harris brothers gone from the USWA? Is that, is that what's happening right now? God, it I looks hope like so. it. Looks like it. I hope so. I would watch a thousand Harlem night matches before I would one Bruce Brothers match. <laughs> like, 
So I, I had actually forgotten this uh, until I did a little research and then it came back to me. I remember seeing them now. But in March of 1993, the Harris brothers went to WCW for a brief time. Uh, they pop up on uh, a couple of Saturday night episodes. I think they were even maybe at a Clash of the Champions or two or something. Uh, but they spent a, a brief time in WCW, and then from there, they would go on to Smoky Mountain for a while. So uh, it seems like um, you know Josh is Josh is going to be excited that we are we are free of the Bruce Brothers at least for quite a while here in Memphis. The only problem is going to be is now it's time to answer those all important questions we ask. And without having his go to, I mean, he didn't have to think about it. Because every week, Josh is like, Bruce Brothers. Yeah. Uh, you don't have that to fall back on. So it's going to be interesting as we answer the questions. And so uh, here we go. And, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to give him the benefit of hearing your answer, Josh. I want, I mean, uh, Richard, I want Josh to answer this first. Josh, <laughs> your least favorite part of this episode. He's big, <laughs> he's black, and he's mean. I, yeah, I, I don't like the big back, big black dog. Like those nipples well, really let's not freak be, let's me not out. be racist here, Josh. I mean, come on. <laughs> Like I, uh, those nipples really freak me out. Like, and that's something that I really, really would have noticed as a kid. And you know, seeing him in the ring <laughs> as a kid, yeah, right. That I would have. I don't even want to know why you were so honed in on nipples as a kid. I, um, I, I would have. I would have immediately. Now that looks weird. <laughs> like seriously, it would have freaked me out back then too. But like, it, even if he was athletic. That would be off-putting, but he's not. He's absolute trash in the ring. Like he's got Tootsie Rolls on his titties, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> They're like the same length. It's fucking weird. But um, yeah, athletically, it's like his knees don't move. It's, no, no or, they or don't. he's got to stick up his ass the whole time that, or, or he's like. He's got an egg up in there, and they're like, don't you break that egg now. And the only thing athletic he did was those two splashes, and he probably poked those guys' eyes out. So you're saying you prefer more of the hard-nosed grappler type. Than, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although, to, in his defense, I saw no headbutts or booty shakes, but still, he he, he didn't – he wasn't a hard-nosed grappler, and, and he didn't bend his knees. All right, oh, well uh, – Richard, who bent their knees enough for you and or this one? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. This is what's your least favorite part of the show? I really thought he was going to say, "I hate the way that the Bruise Brothers made me feel," because I really don't hate them at all. <laughs> um, no, uh, I, I hated how we jammed everything into like segments. It was almost like people were clocking in, doing their spot on the show, and then clocking out uh, because you know you had Jeff there. Jeff Jarrett was there for the first part of the show. And he had all those long segments and then he was gone. Then yeah. Lawler came out for that one segment. Then he was gone. Uh, it just felt like, I don't know. I, we kind of got what we wanted. We're, we're getting new things in there, brand new angles, brand new people. Uh, but it just kind of felt like nothing was connected uh, in a way. You know what I mean? Like it yeah. wasn't like, it was just kind of like, they just said, well, who's here. All right. Well, you'll take the first 30 minutes. You'll take this, you know, this half of this part of the segment. Uh, it just didn't feel like it was concise really. Uh, cause then when you had somebody getting beat up like Jeff Jarrett, where was Lawler at <laughs> where, you know, you know, Eddie come out there once, but I don't know. It just, it just felt like everybody was in there and then they were gone or they were there too long. Well, and that's like I say, that's kind of become Eddie's. I, I don't know. I know this isn't how it works, but like I picture in my head of like Eddie Marlin's back there, like, all right, Jeff, you can go, Jerry, you can go. Eddie starts to stand up. He's like, no, 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 Eddie, you got to save. <laughs> you got to run out and you got to save uh, Doug and you already saved Jeff. And if anything else gets hairy, we may have to have you save, you know, somebody else too. So that's that's your role now, Eddie. You're the you're the savior. So just stick around. Eddie's like, God, I got shit to do too, man. Like I didn't want to <laughs> when he come out and do this promo, he's all fired up. Like, Listen here, dog. Let me tell you something. Because he's pissed off because he had to stay for the whole freaking show when Jeff and you know Jerry Lawler's already, you know, halfway home by now. And uh Lawler's <laughs> at his house. By the time Eddie got out to do his promo, I was going to say they're eating at Shoney's with Macho Man. Yeah, <laughs> still wearing the same. Oh, it's the breakfast bar. Uh huh. 
So, uh, so yeah, nobody asked, but my least favorite part was the fact that Jeff and I, and I've said on the show, people have heard me put over Jeff Jarrett. I'm a fan, but having all those Jeff Jarrett segments back to back like that, as Richard just pointed out, was was not my favorite part. Uh, all right. So on the other side of that, what was your f- most favorite part of the show, Josh? Obviously it was, I mean, the promo package with Macho Man and then him just, I mean, surprising everyone showing up like full garb, everything. It just felt like one of those Memphis is changing moments. I mean, like I, I felt that same way with Luger because yeah. he was, you know, really to me larger than life, but like, man, Macho Man is in that point, And even still now, I mean, everybody just looked at him different. Like he, he was bigger than the wrestlers themselves. He's just like a guy to himself. He's, he's the macho man. It was just surreal seeing him back in Memphis because I mean, a lot of times you would see guys get really famous, you know, like after they were in Memphis, they would go somewhere else, get really famous and you would never hear from them again. They would never lower themselves to, come back to memphis but Sting. macho man <laughs> macho man dude 100 miles an hour came right back into the studio full gimmick it was just it was really cool richard i have a two-way tie for different reasons macho man one was um of course one of my favorites uh but as the show has been going uh, i just cannot get over how great that Jeff Jarrett promo was <laughs> just for a different reason. It's, yeah. you know, Macho Man was iconic. He was one of my favorite wrestlers growing up. Uh, he's still one of my favorites today. He was just, he was a legend, you know, uh, he's got that voice and that, you know, he'll, he'll never be duplicated. He'll never be uh, lived up to. He was just a legend, but that Jeff Jarrett video, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna haunt my dreams for years. <laughs> and uh, just, I will laugh every time I think about, Every time I see a kid shooting a basketball, I will think about Jeff Jarrett and missing <laughs> that video <laughs> or a rocket launch. Yeah, <laughs> next time they run, baby, you're gonna be like, "That one's for you, Double J." <laughs> Somebody pet a Rockweiler and then come back and pet that same Rockweiler the exact same way. I'll think of Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> but yeah. when you go to lo- when you leave to go to work and you pet your dog, you're gonna stop and go back and do it again and go, "That was for Jeff." <laughs> right. In tribute. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I'd be lying if I didn't say I'm totally pissed that no one said that Scotty Flamingo's rap was their favorite part of the show. Um, very disappointing you guys, but I'm going to give you a pass. And so all this other cool stuff happened. I guess it's, I guess it's forgivable, but, uh, I mean, I feel like this is a slam dunk answer here. I'm going to be kind of shocked if this goes any other way, but I have to ask it because it's what we do here. If this was actually 1993, and we were there, would today's TV have inspired you to go buy a ticket to Monday night's card? Absolutely. I mean, Macho Man coming back, and, you know, just the possibility that he actually will win, because, like, before, it's you you know, you got the monsters being fed to Lawler and yeah, he'll, he may lose this one time, but he'll kick their ass the next week. It's, it's, it's really... I don't know. A lot of them are predictable, but yeah. with this one, I don't know, man. Lawler broke out the good outfit and he had the good crown and I don't know. It just, it's a toss up. You never really know who's going to win this one. That's true. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to reference. There's a matchbox 20 song that says, let's see how far we've come. Uh, let's think about this. When we started this, we had Mike Miller as the headliner. Yeah. Like a guy that I had forgotten about, to be honest. Um, but that was where we started. Now we've got the Gilberts wrestling, and they're not even the main. Like six, what, what was it? Six, seven weeks ago, they would have main evented this show. And now they're, you know, they're just part of the card. It's yeah. like, we, and, and, and it's like, that's wow, that's big, you know? Cause the Gilberts are a main event, you know? And, um, uh, so, and you've also got, you know, new guys coming in, uh, with the Harlem Knights. You don't have the bruise brothers anymore. We've killed that feud off, uh, macho man. You've got Scotty Flamingo coming in. 
Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a no brainer that I would want to go to this show, uh, just for nothing else, macho man alone. But then like I, I knew who Scotty Flamingo was, I was a fan. Uh, you got the big black dog. That's, you know, something. Uh, but yeah, he's big, he's black and he is mean. Every time they say big black dog, I always stop and I'm like, what are they going to say after that? <laughs> Cause I ain't expecting dog. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I would have definitely went wanted to go. I would have been begging my mom for the money to buy the ticket to go. And to add a little further context to that, not only when we started were we watching Jerry Lawler feud with Mean Mike Miller, but it was based on a snub at a New Year's Eve party that wasn't (laughs) a New Year's Eve party, whatever that whole (laughs) debacle was. But that was our main angle that we were basing everything around. And now we have a world heavyweight title match with Macho Man Randy Savage as our main event. Like you said, then on the undercard, a loser leaves town match with the Gilberts. Um, and we have a middleweight heavyweight title match with Uncle Danny. Uh, what, what could be better than all that? So, um, and, you know, this show is, is going to be one that we look back on for a long time and be like, man, this show was a milestone. This is the show where Josh could no longer <laughs> hate the Harris brothers every week. And he immediately found big black dog to hate on. So kudos for immediately latching onto someone else that you absolutely can't stand. And you was able to spend a good three minutes describing what a piece of shit he is, (laughs) how terrible he is. And his legs don't bend. And, uh, all because of his nipples. That's it. So it started. Thank you. Thank you. Mystery booker. Whoever (laughs) provided that for us. It is appreciated. (laughs) Now guys, we're heading down to the mid South Coliseum. It's March the 8th, 1993. And, uh, again, I want to point out that for weeks, the Coliseum was hovering around drawing 800 to 1,000 people with these up and down cards we were having, you know, with the doinks of the world coming in. And, uh, you know, Luger came in. It it got to about 1,100. And then the giant Gonzalez comes in, and I don't know if it's coincidental or not. We drew 3,000 people last Monday night with the giant Gonzalez, Jerry Lawler, and Jeff Jarrett with Downtown Bruno taking on the, you know, Bruce Brothers and Brian Christopher. This week, with Macho Man Randy Savage on top wrestling Jerry Lawler with Scotty Flamingo from the WCW here, with Eddie Gilbert and Doug Gilbert in a loser leave town match, we drew. Does anybody want to take a guess? I feel like it's going to go down for whatever weird reason. We'll just say like 2,200. I'm going to say 4,000. 1,500 people. Wow. We, Macho Man drew half the crowd, Giant Gonzalez drew. He's half the height, Gino. You're not <laughs> focusing in on that. I want to find a DeLorean, go back in time to Memphis, and go around to people's houses and just slap at least another 1,500 people that didn't show up, that showed up the week before. That's oh, That pisses me off. But anyway, on to the results. So in the opening match, PG-13 defeated Hurricane Hatchet and Miss Texas when Miss Texas got pinned. In the second match, for the brand new USWA middleweight heavyweight title, Uncle Nightmare Danny Davis defeated J.C. Ice Jamie Dundee to win his, and we do mean his, (laughs) middleweight (laughs) championship. Let that man get a car or another belt. He'll have a fucking tournament strung up real quick. Buy your own belt, Jamie. I'm taking that back to... Taking that back to Louisville. <laughs> All right. Then in the third match on the card, I'm kind of surprised at this. This is the third match on the card. Hot stuff. Eddie Gilbert pinned the king of rock and roll, Doug Gilbert, in a loser leaves town match. Doug Gilbert is leaving town, folks. Um, in the fourth match, in a match that was billed on television simply as a grudge match, no mention of titles. Here it says. 
Brian Christopher and the Big Black Dog defeated the Moon Dogs, Spot and Splat, to win the USWA Tag Team Championships. In the fifth match, the USWA Southern Heavyweight Champion Jeff Jarrett pinned Scotty Flingo to retain the title. And in the main event, for the USWA Unified World Heavyweight title true to form, Jerry the King Lawler went to a double countout with Macho Man Randy Savage. So there you go. Uh, but to their credit, that was the only non-finish of the night. So maybe we're learning. You know, if we look back several, several weeks ago when we were having, you know, seven matches with five DQs and all these non-finishes, I guess we can have one um on the card but a lot happening here in the uswa we're having fun uh, i'm glad that you guys have been available to to join us uh josh and richard it's always fun when you guys are here and uh we look forward to seeing you here next week hey folks before we get out of here i'd just like to take a moment to tell you we appreciate you checking out the podcast and if you would do us a favor subscribe rate and review the podcast wherever you're listening to this right now wherever you're watching it uh if you'll just take a moment to Either subscribe to rate and review. Let us know what you think. Uh, we hope you're liking it. But even if you're not, let us know what you would like to see changed, and we will take that in consideration as we move forward. So uh, we really appreciate any feedback we can get. Also, we just want to say how proud we are to be a part of the WrestleCopia brand of wrestling podcast. Ray Russell brings you something for everyone over at WrestleCopia.com. Check out all the great wrestling podcasts available over there right now. And for all things related to the Retro Wrestling Review Podcast, you can go to USWAPodcast.com and you can find links to everything we have there. Our Facebook, our Twitter slash X, our TikTok, our Instagram our merch store. That's right. We've got shirts. We've got hats. We've got phone cases. We've got all kinds of great stuff. And it's all right there at our store. And you can find a link to it at uswapodcast.com. There's a link to the YouTube channel we're associated with, the Retro Wrestling Archive. You can find all that there. And if you have questions for us, if you saw something on the show that you have a question about or a comment about, if you've got some info to answer a question we have, or you had a question you want us to read on the air, if you want to work out an ad swap, if you want to have any kind of communication with us, you can go and send an email to uswapodcast at outlook.com and I will get back to you just as quickly as humanly possible. And if you're a fan of Dangerous Conversations with Doug Gilbert, and if you've heard it, I know you are. Check out DougGilbertPodcast.com for all things related to Doug's podcast. You can find links to our Facebook page for the show, our Twitter. You can find links to Doug's social media, his Twitter, his Facebook. All that's available there, plus a link to the YouTube channel. And if you have a question for Doug, you would like for me to ask him on the air, you can send that question to Doug Gilbert Podcast at Outlook.com and we will get it added and it will get answered in a future episode just as quickly as we can work it in. So we appreciate you listening. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you here next week for more 